Welcome to Dhaka Sessions Interviews. Today we're joined by Itacham Kabir, a man who's presenting Bangladesh to the world through the lens of his camera. An engineer with several imaging patents in his name, a columnist, and a photographer with several published books containing his photographs. We will discuss and try to learn a thing or two about hobby photography and professional photography from a man who calls himself a rubber planter. Itisham Bhai, welcome to Dhaka Sessions. Thank you very much, Sandhu. Glad <laughs> to be here. Great. All right. You had an entirely different career before uh, professional photography. What happened? Well, you know, I got into photography when I was an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. So I was studying electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. And um, halfway through there, I suddenly, well, not suddenly, but there was one particular incident. Uh, when I went into an Ansel Adams uh, exhibition of his real prints and, and I decided that I wanted to do this. Gotcha. But I also understood that it's very hard to make a profession out of photography and right. I was on a good track in, in engineering and I had a, yeah. uh, you know, I have good math skills. So mm. um, I decided to stick with engineering and carry photography as a kind of uh, hobby. A hobby, yeah. So then uh, I was an, I worked as an engineer for 20, 22, 23 years. Decided, okay, as if you get too old, you <laughs> for the photography is a very physical thing. Right. You, know, you have to carry the camera around. You have to go to places. Yeah, camera to money. Yeah, the, for the birds, it's a huge thing, and yeah. even for normally, money just it requires a lot of movement. Right. And so I figured that I want, if I ever want to do this, uh, I, I should do this while I'm still able to. Right. As you get older, it becomes harder. So mm. then, at some point, I said, okay. Enough is enough. Yeah. Enough of the engineering. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was very lucky I was able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, do you remember the first photo you took? And what was it? The first photo I took was probably of a pretty girl. Because of I was that was one of the first <laughs> things was to try to as an undergraduate you're trying to impress the girls with your camera. But I have no recollection who it was or what okay. uh, but I went to see a, there, there was a Ansel Adams book signing mm. in Palo Alto in I think it was in nineteen eighty three or eighty two or eighty three, something like that. And I just happened to be in the neighborhood. I saw the sign. I saw actually I saw a line of people coming out of this gallery and then I saw the sign and I said, Oh, okay, I'll I'll get in line and he was signing the book, so oh his book. So I got in line and waited for a couple of hours, got in and bought the book. And then I had my camera with me, so I said, Mr. Adams, can I take your picture? Oh my goodness. And he said, Yeah, sure. He looked at me and I took his picture. And I knew I, I thought it wouldn't come out, but it came out. The only problem was that he was completely bald. Okay, okay. he was completely bald by that time. And he had a shiny, shiny <laughs> head, and the light was right over over, over his head. <laughs> so the light reflected so much that this head kind of tended to disappear, vanish. You know, <laughs> vanish. So, uh, okay. But uh, but I was uh, that was one of my first uh, memorable pictures. Please tell our audience who Ansel Adams is. So Ansel Adams was a landscape photographer in America, and he was uh, one of the greatest photographers ever. Um, he, um, he, he became really good at uh, promoting conservation with, his, with right. his photographs. So he was able to teach people and reach people uh, by showing them, look how beautiful this, this land is and how beautiful a country we have. Right. And, uh, Let's try to keep it without destroying it and let's try to enjoy it without messing it up. Okay. So what is it about photography that drives you? Um, you know, what is your personal objective when you're taking a photograph? I really believe that photography is a means of communicating. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to be able to show something to people they haven't seen before. So. Uh, my sort of my motto is show me something I haven't seen. Okay, okay, that's a good one. And I think because that's the way you you kind of open people's eyes and you perhaps educate or or at least enlighten them about about something that they didn't know before. Right. right. Yeah. 
with a DSLR in almost every other guy's hand, um, you know, including mine. <laughs> <laughs> good hands. It's a good hands then. <laughs> what would you categorize um, as a good photograph? What what determines a good photo? According to me, okay. So. Uh, Again, I uh, go back to that what I mentioned earlier, that if I see a photograph and I think, oh, this person is showing me something I haven't seen before. Mm. You know, it may be something very simple that I have, you know, maybe it's a house or something, or maybe it's some water or whatever, you know, a mountain, but it's shown in a way that I haven't seen before that, that uh, perhaps exposes a kind of beauty that I, I didn't know existed, you know, the light, uh, maybe the sunlight falling in a certain way or, or uh, winter mist or, or whatever. I mean, and, and would you say it's subjective? Is this subjective? I think it, it is. Between, I think it is. Between, yeah, uh, yeah it, is, it, you know. it is. It is to some extent, um, um, to a large extent, I think, because, you know, we all have our own life experiences. You know, you might have seen things. That, I'm sure you've seen a lot of things that I haven't seen and vice versa, right? Yeah. So, but in general, trying to sort of see things in a, in a, in a um, new way, perhaps, or in a, in a different way, in a, in a unique way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shomi Bhai, you've uh, published six books on photography and uh, this particular one is my favorite. I think I've given at least 50 or 100 oh. to, to many people around the world when I travel. Which is your favorite? Well, first of all, thank you for keeping me in business <laughs> because <laughs> someone needs to buy those books. <laughs> No, it's, it's brilliant. I, I love it. Thank I mean, you, just look at this book. Thank it's you. got a cute little bag and, and you know, colors of Bangladesh. It's brilliant. Thank you. Thank I, I've never never seen, you know, the Shundor Bhabe Bangladesh ke present. Yeah, I tried to you know, it's, present it's so beautiful. Uh, and, favorable um, you know, what so, I saw with my eyes yeah yeah it's it's fantastic I think we deserve a break after all the years of negative publicity we absolutely got. <laughs> absolutely I mean I mean you know I'm I'm, the bully that, you know, I'm so glad that finally we're moving away from have you heard of Bangladesh ah yes the country of floods, floods yes you floods know. and poverty and poverty all that, and, yeah. and and now we've well, got, nowadays we we'll give money we we'll loan money to yeah, Sri Lanka exactly. and send medicine to absolutely. India. There you no, go. But, but seriously, we are we are uh, amazing. amazing. We've come a long way, also absolutely. of course. And yes. we've got so that's much to be proud of. A lot of other people's work. We've got so work. much yeah. to be proud of. Yes. So anyway, uh, back to your books. Which is your favorite out of these six? Ah, that's a very hard one, you know, because they're all they're all like my babies, right? So I thought, I thought you it would it would automatically be the silhouette. The silhouette because <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm <laughs> not the uh, Which one? You know what happened is that as I started doing the books, you know, um, I wanted to make a book first, mm. and I decided that. I wanted to do it myself. Okay, I, I sort of looked at the environment, you know, the the book book publishing market and yeah. how it's done, and I, I sort of decided that maybe I'm better off having all the control in my hand. Mm. Yeah. So I did did my design. I made the book in InDesign and 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 tried to uh, do the layout myself. I pretty much did everything myself except for the cover. I go to a professional person for the cover. Okay, but. What happened over the years, uh, it's been almost seven or eight years that I've been doing these books. Mm. The, the, the first one was, a, you know, in, in some way it was a little honorary work, right? Because the first time I'm That's trying time it. But it also had a, had a sort of a raw power. Yes. Okay? Uh, and then my last book, uh, which is this Exploring Shundarban, is more, uh, I, I, I like to think it's more finished or more refined. Okay. But it, I think, I think maybe the, it doesn't have as much, uh, you know, that kind of power that the very first, the first book one had, had, right? Because it had more yeah. of your uh, passion and energy into yeah, it. Yeah, there's there's more sort of trying to yeah, yeah, exactly. So so each each book has its pluses and minuses. Mm. Um, that little book, The Colors of Bangladesh, is the only book I've done of my people photographs, and Achoo. for that reason, I really like it. The other reason I really like it is because it's Somehow the way I divided the book, I don't know where I got the ideas from, but it fell so nicely. You know, I have chapters on friendship and grace and uh, favorite things mm. and, you know, just kind of things that, that in every day you kind of, uh, these are things special 
এলিমিনেশন <laughs> 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 So for example, uh, for uh, the Colors of Bangladesh book, maybe I started with uh, three times as many photographs are, as are in there. Mm. But I also had some idea of the flow, Achy. the sequence of you know, the story, story I'm trying to tell. You know? So mm. pictures that kind of fell with each other and, and mm. you know, told the story in a nice way or maybe in a surprising way. Mm. Uh, those were the pictures that ended up being there and then uh, I might have had a really really good photograph but if it wasn't fitting in with the right. theme of the of the ch- that ch- particular chapter or the book uh, then I sometimes had to leave it out and um, you know your photographs are like your babies and it's very hard to throw throw one out right <laughs> it's, it's like, like the same thing you do with songs right with, with music right if you're if yeah, you're if trying written to, a song right right you yeah. say oh okay stay put, we'll have maybe to next round <laughs> yeah yeah you get to wait yeah so uh, one of the uh, one of the mistakes people make is that they just show too many photographs they you know on 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 facebook or on uh, instagram mm. or whatever um, you know they take they'll t- find one subject you know maybe a bird or something and they then take 20, 20 pictures, angles of yeah it. 20 angles and then they'll show uh, you know in rapid succession they'll show you three or four or five of them and you know after you have seen one then you know you're not showing me something new, new. you're not showing me something i haven't seen before yeah. so it's like the selfie i don't know why people do this <laughs> it's you buddy <laughs> yeah the selfie is an art in itself i mean <laughs> i i have to admit i i i admire selfies a lot but i am just utterly <laughs> like <laughs> Uh, I'm, disgusted I'm, I'm by it. I'm probably the worst selfie man. This oh, is like okay. the king and this is like the <laughs> other end of the spectrum. You know, this is what the selfie is. <laughs> the self-proclaimed selfie, selfie, selfie king of Bangladesh. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Well recognized <laughs> selfie well king recognized. of Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who has influenced your work the most? There are many photographers over the years. And uh, I think, uh, well, Ansel Adams I talked sure. about. and i did street photography for many years yes uh where you know it's basically trying to capture life in the street and trying to make art out of spontaneous life on the street and uh the person who is comes to mind whenever i think of street photography is a french photographer by the name of ari cartier bresson so cartier bresson is was like the greatest a uh, street photographer yeah. ever there have been many after him who are also sure. good but he was sort of the so he was a he was a, a very strong influence and then um when i got into um birds <laughs> and nature stuff uh it was it got very interesting because bird photography is so different from street <laughs> photography it's like it learning a new thing altogether but there was a guy by the name of art morris arthur morris who uh who popularized a term called bird as art okay. and he he has a blog called bird as art he has a website called bird as art and i saw that i saw that phrase i said wow that's interesting mm. and i and i started thinking like how could you create art out of birds True. and and you know so that's that that so okay. his that triggered just, your yeah yeah that, so he was although I don't like some of the work he does but he's he's a master no doubt yeah yeah but but uh, I sort of go take a slightly different route yeah and what's the longest Just that <laughs> you've had to wait yeah what's the longest you've had, had to wait, wait for, for the perfect shot 
Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever gotten the perfect shot, right? I mean, this <laughs> never happens. I mean, other people get it, but it somehow, it always eludes me. But I found a nest of, uh, do you know what is uh, black wing kites? Yes. Uh, black wing kites are those, they have white head yeah. and black wings and red eyes. They're beautiful birds, uh, about a big, they're about the size of a crow. And they were raising their, their kids. Right. And the thing with nests is that you never tell anyone where the nest is because otherwise the people come and disturb it. So I, I just went there myself and I, I was keeping a safe distance, not disturbing them. But I also knew that these kids would learn to fly. So I knew oh. these chicks would learn to fly. So you waited and, for that. And because it's a, it's a raptor, it's a bird of prey, that there are two things that the parents have to teach the kids. It's not enough just to teach them to fly, they have to also teach them to hunt. hunt. Okay. So I was watching them and I tried to go back as, as, many, as much as I could. And then I saw, one day uh, I saw the, the chicks going like this, right? So the chicks were going like this, fluttering, and that means that they were ready to, they were very close to flight. And then a couple of days later, they were, they were taking short flights. And then I saw that the parents would normally bring in the food and drop it on the yeah. nest. They just bring mm -hmm. uh, like a lizard or a frog or a other uh, dead uh, chick of another bird or something and they come flying very quickly. They'd whistle when they come, they'd come flying very quickly and drop it and go off. And the kids would just, you know, uh, finish it off. And then one day I saw one parent come and it was, it was hovering. It was hovering. These birds can hover and just stay in one place, right? And it was hovering, and the kid just went flying towards it. And I and I did. I immediately took some took some shots. I had no idea what it. It was quite far, so I had no idea what was going on. I took the shots, but I saw some action, something interesting happening. Then then I realized that the parents had brought uh, the food, and but did not he was giving it. it yeah, teaching so, him to grab oh. it, and then. So once I saw that, I wanted to get a better picture of it. And that took me weeks and weeks, at least a couple of weeks, many hours to try to, oh yeah. Because they would come in very suddenly. You don't know yeah. where they're where coming from. Be. They'd just come and, and the kids would go there and, you know. Wow. <laughs> it was, so that was very exciting for me. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a perfect shot. I don't think it was, but it was a shot yeah. worth waiting for it. Awesome. It's several <laughs> weeks of work. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, Manush. Amar hatte, you know, hatte guitar dekle, bolle ekta gaan gao to chhutu. What's the most difficult part about being in photography for you? Well, you know, I think one of the most difficult things is that I see a lot of really good people, very committed people who have become or who are trying to become professional photographers. Other modhe shop shop mein ekta don do ekta competition lege thake and there's there and, and it it's very painful to watch uh, because uh, you know some of these people are very talented they're working really really hard um, and I kind of count myself lucky that I sort of stayed away from it by being an engineer but the world of the photographer is a very cutthroat world and it's it's, it's kind of yeah it's one of it's a very painful thing to watch and oje jokhon ya hoy uh, for example, someone says, oh, I want, I'm going to make a calendar and mm. then uh, some, some photographer will come and bid, you know, bid uh, 10,000 taka yeah, for a photo yeah. and then someone else will come and say, oh, I'll do it for you for 5,000. Yeah. And, you know, that sort of kills the, kills the market, right? Absolutely. So that kind of thing is kind of, kind of unpleasant. Personally, being a photographer is... Uh, because, <laughs> <laughs> but recently I've been seeing that you've been doing a lot of show. I mean, I'm seeing uh, on, on your Facebook that you've been posting a lot of your people photography. Yeah. Uh, so is that what's coming yeah. up next uh, as a project? Is that something that you're looking into? Well, the, the people uh, photography, uh, these are all black and white stuff that I've been yes. posting. So what happened, this was a uh, uh, result, this was a result of the lockdown. I'm Basai <laughs> Boshu <laughs> Going <laughs> through the old ones. I have my old negatives. I never threw out anything. So I have tons of old negatives. So I was just, uh, I never had the time to scan them. And now I'm scanning them and, and I'm finding that there were pictures there that I had completely forgotten about, mm. some nice pictures that I never even knew existed. 
So that's where that that is coming from. I don't know where it's going to go. I'm not sure if there is enough substance there to make a like a book or something. Maybe one on Bangladesh. The Bangladesh work is was much more uh, sort of focused and and intense. Okay. Uh, কিন্তু এখন দেখতেছি আমেরিকার ছবিগুলো লোকে পছন্দ করতেছে বাট দেয়ার উইল বি সো সো মাই নেক্সট কোশ্চেন ইজ এক্স্যাক্টলি দ্যাট সো ডু ইউ হ্যাভ এনি সাজেশনস অন অন আ বেটার ওয়ে অফ আর্কাইভিং ফটোগ্রাফস whether they're you know your family or your hobby photo photographs whatever i mean what's a good what would be a good suggestion for archiving those and then what would be a good resolution to scan them in right so basically the you know at this point in our in our photographic journey of the world we are at a point now where i think the resolution really doesn't matter too much because we are looking at you know 800 by 800 picture anyway, is fine on, on a cell yeah. phone right and that's what most people are looking at yeah. uh but i think the really important thing is that let's say this 12000 photographs or 16000 photographs uh that that were scanned so how do you organize them and then and how do you put a frame around them and you know sort of pick out one particular one you know acha oi master er chobi ta dekhsilam oi ta koi gelo oi for categorizing right cataloging them is yeah yeah more cataloging important. them so the cataloging is basically it's it's tagging so acha and and the software you need is is called a, uh, a content management software cms acha. There are lots of content management softwares okay. out there. Are these I use freely something available? called Lightroom. Okay. Yeah. Are these freely freely available? Lightroom is not free, okay. but I think there are some there is uh, another one called Picasa which is free. Mm, Picasa is free. Yeah. And Picasa is free. I used Picasa for many years. It was wonderful and now I've converted to Lightroom for several years. Okay. Uh it gives me a little bit more uh flexibility. Okay. But uh what what that does is that then then this uh, your entire collection is under the control of this software and you can go yeah. and uh search for different pictures mm. you know and you can organize your folders by year or by subject or whatever and go look for things so the organization is very important and if you don't do the organization then those pictures eventually get lost they, they you 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 lose them yeah yeah your curiosity has uh, taken you to many countries of the world which was the most interesting place that you've gone to take photographs if i have to name one it would be brazil okay yeah, brazil was marvelous or brazil was because really, it's brazil exciting so many <laughs> action and yeah, so much going so on so many beautiful birds bright colors and yeah and 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 jaguars they had oh, jaguars there's all kinds of wildlife in brazil and and beautiful beautiful birds but if, <laughs> i was referring to the beautiful people oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah that too. <laughs> Brazil is famous for that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Brazil people were very nice. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately I was away from mm. uh, you know I was pretty much out you in the wilderness the with uh, just a handful of other okay. people. So I didn't get to you know see do any people watching it was all okay. all bird watching. Okay. Um but the other country that was really mysterious and I really liked was Madagascar. Acha. And I think if 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 the world open when the world opens up challa from from the pandemic i think that it would be like the first country i would like to visit mm. is go back is is madagascar because madagascar is mysterious and there are so many things in madagascar that you cannot find anywhere else okay. 80% of their uh, species di- diversity that okay. means the you know mm. the the biodiversity of the jatats yeah. are 80% of that is only found in madagascar my goodness and okay. it's an incredible country mane eto moja at kichu dekhar ache do you believe in being photogenic a bird has to be photogenic okay a bird has to be photogenic okay. you know the bird has to people can can or cannot be photo it's up to them right <laughs> <laughs> because because you, you, they can't help being you know who they are and, and they have, their facial expressions usually make up make up for uh <laughs> make up for the <laughs> <laughs> you're right this is a really really beautiful bird so so here's a book of uh, a very beautiful bird a very photogenic bird okay, yeah, yeah i see what you <laughs> what you mean <laughs> so there's a one bird in, there's one bird is in particular called a darter Achha. darter banglay bole sap pakhi acha a darter ta dekhte kichu ta oi je pan kori ache na kichu ta dekhte pan kori moto but it's bigger and it has a magnificent magnificent wings ha huh? 
কালো আর মধ্যে রূপালি একটা রূপালি ব্যান্ড আছে দুইটা একদম আলো পড়লে চক 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 করে খুব সুন্দর লাগে আর ওর লেজ থেকে কতগুলা ইয়ে বাইর হয়ে আছে হ্যাঁ কতগুলা ফেদার বাইর হয়ে আছে তো ও যখন এরকম ও রোদের মধ্যে এরকম করে সে পাখা শুকায় হ্যাঁ পাখা শুকায় তখন তার টেইল ফেদার সব ইয়ে হয়ে থাকে বাইর হয়ে থাকে বাট ইফ ইউ ক্যাচ হিম এট দ্য রং টাই দেন হোয়াট ইউ সি ইজ একটা দুইটা টেল ফেদার আছে বাকি টেল ফেদার নাই তারপরে এখান দিয়ে কতগুলো আছে কতগুলো নাই এখান দিয়ে একটা দুইটা আছে একটা দুইটা নাই অ্যান্ড হি জাস্ট লুকস লাইক ইউ নো সামান রিয়েলি মেস্ট আপ মেকিং দিস গাইন ইউ মেক অল দ্য এফোর্ট ট্রাইং টু টেক এ পিকচার অফ পিকচার জাস্ট লুকস ট্যারেবল এতে সাম ভাই উই সিং দ্য বিউটি অফ বাংলাদেশ থ্রু ইউর আইজ অ্যান্ড ইউর লেন্স অ্যান্ড ইউর বুকস and you make us proud of the beauty of bangladesh uh, thank you. Um, and we're thankful to you for that so thank you so much for sure. joining us today thank you <laughs> do you have a pleasure. message f- i i think uh, really believe in bangladesh believe how beautiful it is and try to keep it beautiful we have an incredibly incredibly nice and diverse country uh, we have so much to be proud of but we have to take care of it yeah. 800 uh bird species uh that uh you know even countries like France and Turkey don't have that many different variety right. of birds uh so you know just uh, just being a little careful about how we you know when we cut down a whole bunch of trees or create a new area for development just leave a little bit aside for the so the birds can also live because you know we share this land with yeah. with the other mm-hmm. life forms so so that's one thing to be to be proud of 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 Uh, our work our our what we have inherited from yeah. our elders and, yeah. and and their elders and so on and the other thing is that um if you are a photographer and you love bird photography or wildlife photography try to do it in a way that does not disturb them and that that's uh, particularly true if the if the species is uh, a rare one or an uncommon one you know chori pakhi shalik pakhi e gula ke you know they're just like they're like all over the place so you can go near them you can bother them i don't care right because there's, there's so many of them that they're, they're, they'll be fine but if it's a very rare bird and it builds a nest near your house and you want to photograph it you know give it space and don't tell all your friends come and look at this you know it's not a circus did i answer your question absolutely okay. perfect So um Chotu and the rest of Dhaka Sessions uh, Dhaka Sessions crew I want to thank you very much for inviting me here and I really enjoyed uh, having this discussion and meeting all of you um and uh, surprisingly you know in this discussion I found myself learning some things to asking myself some questions that maybe <laughs> maybe I hadn't I thought hadn't, of before uh, thought of so it was a learning experience for me and uh, and i wish you all the best in your journey i think you're doing a wonderful thing i hope it's a huge success and thank you so much that you guys uh, you know keep doing what you're doing great thank you very much okay. all right then